Yeah, 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 right. I mean, indeed. Oh, boy, that's right. Okay. Look, if you've ever seen any of my videos, uh, you know that a two-minute tip is a stretch. I mean, I got the gift of gab. Uh, but you know what? You got to have a goal. You got to reach for the sky. There it is. Uh, and I figured if I limited it to two minutes, I might actually achieve three or four. <laughs> so, uh, you know, just try to be realistic, but also goal-oriented. We should all be proud of me. Uh, so before I get into it, I will be putting a clock up, by the way, uh, just for sheer amusement's sake, so we can all enjoy how not too many I am. Uh, but before I do that, I wanted to talk just for a minute about the philosophy of the two-minute tips that I want. Uh, I mean, they're just that for me. They're tips. They're, they're uh, helpful hints, tricks of the trade, that sort of thing. They're, they're not meant to be rules uh, or even come close to a rule. Nothing militant or rigid. I don't have much rigid in my game. I, I try to stay open to new things and new discoveries all the time. So I try not to lock anything in there. I just uh, I just find a thing that works for me. And if it works and leads me to other things, then it's a good thing. So if you take that attitude into these videos, I hope they'll be of a lot more use to you. Uh, so there, that's the disclaimer. And, and uh, yeah, I'm, I'm delaying a little bit. <laughs> I'm nervous. I mean, the second I think of that damn clock... I start panicking and thinking I'm just going to talk even longer now and faster. Uh, oh, it, whatever. Put the clock up. Let's go. Just put the clock up. Tip number one, uh, arranging your palette. Uh, so uh, arranging your palette should help your workflow. That's the key concept. So for me, I'm a very emotionally based, uh, not chaotic, but kind of improvisational painter. I like to react with my paint in the moment. And ironically, I discovered over time that I needed a very clean and orderly workspace in order to facilitate that workflow. Uh, so I put my colors all on the outside uh, edges of my palette. And that also gives me the largest amount of mixing space that I can possibly have, which is great when you get into larger canvases and you're using a lot more paint. Uh, so there's a payoff in that as well. Uh, the and I also uh, put my paints in the exact same order every single time without fail. I never change it. Uh, even if I'm adding or deleting paints, I'll just put them in, say I change a cobalt blue for a cerulean, then the cerulean goes close to it. Or if I'm adding, then the, the cerulean will go close to the cobalt. So I'm still in my blue family. And I can just find those paints much easier. See, if I'm, if I'm following a stream of consciousness thought on my painting, I don't want to have to look for those paints. I just want to glance over, grab it, mix, and go. And if I have to hunt and peck for things, then I've dented that moment, and I, I don't want to do that. It just slows you up a lot. Uh, so, so those are some payoffs for an organized and orderly workstation. It's just all muscle memory. You know where your paints are every time. You paint better and quicker. Uh, now, they're not going to give me any extra time for this, but I'm going to give you a bonus tip. I also scrape my palette. Uh, very frequently actually and I started that practice because I was very nervous of mixing paint I didn't think it was good at, well I wasn't good at it and so I, I was nervous of it and when I realized that I started scraping it I forced myself to scrape it even if I was using those colors in that moment uh, because having to match that color mix it again just forced me to be a color mixer and over time I just became pretty good at it and now I like to mix paint and I like to find new colors I've never mixed before to improve and build that strength. So that's a big payoff there. The second payoff is that as you scrape it off and put it to the side you develop these beautiful neutral tones, these grays that I've got over here and they're very helpful for subtle passages of a painting or to allow primary passages to have more pop. So there's a lot of benefit uh, to that as well. So that's a little bonus tip. So let's say that I could afford three minutes for that one. I still broke the rules. I didn't even come close, but I tried. You, I hope you could see the sweat pouring and, and the nerves and how hard I actually tried. I gave it a good old college effort. Oh, well. I didn't make it. That's the bottom line, but I tried. So there's your tips for today. Uh, the next tip uh, video is going to be a slight continuation of this. So you might even call it a part two. I'm going to focus on a little bit more of my color mixing methodology and how I arrange my brushes to uh, just make that a more efficient workflow again. So join me for that one. Uh, I'll try to get out as quick as I can. Uh, thanks for joining me. If you like the video, hit the like button and uh, just stay safe in the meantime and stay healthy. And I'll see you all in the next video and go paint.
What am I going to say? Who, who's here? There's not even anybody here. See, I'm talking as though somebody's here in the room with me. Nobody's here. I'm putting the clock up. I'm the one that did that. Nobody else is here. I'm stressing myself. I don't have a boss. I'm my own producer. Why? Why am I like this? Why am I? Why can't I just do a five minute tip? Who said I can't do a five minute tip? Ten, ten minute tip. Ten minute tip. Let it down. Uh, I think I did all that with one breath.